When I make these installations, and it's, uh, it always starts with a sense of place. I just try to look at what the canvas is trying to tell me and just go with it, follow through, remove myself. What I'm trying to do with this new body of work is making the process a little bit more like making sculpture. Growing up in Israel, my, my dad was a bus driver and my mom was a homemaker and I was not really exposed to art. Art was not, I, no artist studios, no galleries, no museums. I didn't know being an artist is a thing. And it took me a while to understand that that's who I am. That's what this need to build and create. I was always building things. And so they channeled me into architecture, which is what I'm, it, you know, our architecture and design, which I use a lot in creating that knowledge and creating spaces, three-dimensional spaces. It's very liberating to try to control it, to try to, to control the not controlling or not to control the controlling. When I work with clay, there is no separation between the clay and my body. It's like a complete, it's one, it's at one with my body. And it's really easy to just get lost in the process. My journey to become an artist was not linear. I mean, it took many detours and, but clay was the constant. It's, I started working with it with Clay when I was 18. And this was part of the portfolio that I was making uh, to go to architecture school and design school in, in Israel. So when I, I immigrated here, I realized, okay, I need to start making art. There was a clay shop by, a clay workshop by my house and I started going every day. And in, initially it was like once a week for two hours, then it became twice a week for two hours. I think when you walk through an installation and you're surrounded with it, there is a, a much bigger feeling and less separation between you and the art. I'm interested in that state of being, in that, in, that, in that place. And I think scale has a lot to do with it, being inside the art, being part of the art. When you work with clay at the size of scale that I work with, it takes time to build a piece, to get to the gesture that you want to get to. So you have to do a layer and a layer and a layer and a layer, and you have to wait between layers so it doesn't collapse, because if it's too wet, it collapses. If it's too dry, you can't get to it. So it's this dance. This feeds into the clay work, and the clay work feeds into this. I don't really think about work on canvas as painting. I think of them as maybe a wall sculpture, maybe means to tell a story or a particular narrative that requires that kind of expression. I'm a big believer that ideas come to us, that if we're silent enough and still enough, these ideas that are floating in the universe come to us as a collaborator. So this particular vessel in time, with the experience, with the skills, this idea says, okay, you can do this. And so you can manifest this idea in the world. So I wanna be ready mentally and physically to really be in tune with what needs to happen. You explore different modes of expression, different materials, different, to just see what feels right for that particular manifestation of an idea. And so I think that's how I kind of operate. I sometimes leave, leave a painting alone for three, four, five months. And if it doesn't call me to come back in, I don't, I leave it alone. Painting for me, as opposed to sculpting. The difference is, I think, when, when you sculpt is a little bit like playing a horn. And painting is like playing a piano. When you play a horn, your whole body is involved in making the sound. When you sculpt, your whole body, or at least the scale I work in, the, your whole body is involved in making the work. And when you're painting, it's much more, it's a little bit more like this, like you're playing a piano, right? 
The kiln is a wonderful partner in making work, in making, in, for me. I don't have to make all those decisions because the kiln will make a de the decisions for me. I kind of set guidelines and the kiln will say, well, maybe I'll do this and maybe I'll do that. And then I'll mix it and with the temperature and how long it's been in the, in, in the kiln and how long I fired it for and did I soak it, didn't I soak it? Was it oxidation or reduction? I just kind of set the guidelines for the kiln and the kiln does what it does. I do it in such a way that invites cracks, invites breaks, but they're still structurally sound. So it's this idea that we surrender to, to vulnerability. You know, Anne Truitt said that vulnerability is the guardian of integrity. So surrendering to that kind of vulnerability creates a really interesting uh, tension and release in the work. So there is this, the, the cracks and the breaks, but the piece is still held together. So it's a little bit like a metaphor to human beings. I mean, the ceramic works just like, just like humans. We're much stronger than what we appear. And all the cracks and the scars is, um, is what makes us unique because it's the, the story. This, it's our own, each individual story that, um, that is beautiful. <laughs>